God made the world and everything in it, and since he is Lord of heaven and earth, he do not dwell in temples made with man hands. Nor is he worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything, for it is he who gives to all life, breath, and all things. He has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings, so that they should seek him, in the hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. We ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, something shaped by art and man's devising. Truly, these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent, because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. Jesus' birth. There were forty-two generations from Abraham to the Christ. Jesus, who is the Christ, was born to a woman named Mary, forty-two generations later from Abraham. However, she was engaged to a man named Joseph, and before they came together, she was conceived with child of the Holy Spirit. Joseph and those that knew of it, thought that she had conceived by another man, and Joseph was going to put her away secretly because of it. However, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and told him to not be afraid to take Mary as his wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. The angel of the Lord told him that she would bring forth a son, and he was to call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Isaiah and other prophets prophesied that Jesus would be born by the seed of a woman. They prophesied that she would be a virgin, with child, and bear a son, and they will call his name Emmanuel, which is translated, God with us. Joseph did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took Mary as his wife and did not know her until she had brought forth her firstborn son, and Joseph called his name Jesus. Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king. Wise men came from the east to Jerusalem seeking baby Jesus. They had seen his star in the east and had come to worship him, for they knew that he was born king of the Jews. However, when Herod the king heard of this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Therefore, he gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, and he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They that knew the prophecy of the coming Messiah, said to him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for it is written by the prophet Micah. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, in the land of Judah, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you will come forth to me the one to be ruler who will shepherd my people in Israel, whose goings forth are from of old, from everlasting. Herod, having evil intentions, secretly called the wise men to determine from them what time the star appeared. He wanted them to go and search for the young child and when they had found him to bring back word to him, that he would go and worship him also, but his intentions were to find the baby Jesus to destroy him. The wise men followed the star that came and stood over the place where the child Jesus was, they went inside, and saw baby Jesus with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then the wise men opened their treasures, and presented gifts to baby Jesus, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then they were divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, therefore, they departed for their own country another way. Herod's intention was to find baby Jesus to kill him. Therefore, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream to tell him to take the young child and his mother and flee to Egypt, and they were to stay there until the Lord brought word, for Herod was seeking the young child to destroy him. Therefore, Joseph took baby Jesus and his mother by night and departed for Egypt, and they were there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet Hosea, saying, And out of Egypt I called my son. It was when Herod saw that he was deceived by the wise men, he became exceedingly angry, and he sent forth and put to death all male children who were in Bethlehem and in all its districts, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. Herod later died, and an angel of the Lord appeared again to Joseph in a dream while he was in Egypt, telling him to take the young child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, 
because those who sought the child's life were dead. However, when Joseph heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judea instead of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there, and being warned by God in a dream, Joseph turned aside into the region of Galilee, and he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, and Jesus was then on called a Nazarene. Jesus had now grown up and he came from Galilee to John, who was baptizing people at the Jordan, to be baptized too. It was when Jesus had been baptized, he came up immediately from the water, and the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. Then suddenly a voice came from heaven, saying This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Satan tempts Jesus in the wilderness. Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit, turned from the Jordan, and was immediately led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. Jesus was there in the wilderness with the wild beasts. He fasted forty days and forty nights and he ate nothing, and afterward, when the days of fasting had ended, he was hungry. Now the devil came, known as Satan, the tempter, and he began to tempt Jesus. Each time Satan would start a conversation to tempt Jesus, he would first show Jesus a stone and start the question with, If you are the Son of God command that these stones become bread. Jesus' response would be, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Again, Satan took Jesus into the holy city Jerusalem and set him up on the pinnacle of the temple, and here Satan quotes scripture, and say if you are the son of God throw yourself down, for it is written, he will give his angels charge over you, and in their hands, they will bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Nevertheless, Jesus' response was, it is written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Satan tempts Jesus a third time and, and this time he takes Jesus up on a high mountain, shows him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time, and the devil said to him, All authority I will give you, and their glory, for this has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. Jesus' response was, Get behind me, Satan. For it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Satan knows that Jesus is the Son of God, therefore, he surely did not forget that the world and everything in the world belonged to Jesus already. Satan just has control for only a short time over many people, many governments, and many nations, because he is at this time the God of this age. The devil left Jesus, and then angels came and ministered to him, the Son of God. Jesus' Ministry the Spirit of the Lord was upon Jesus. The Father anointed him to preach the gospel to the poor. God, the Father sent Jesus to heal the broken-hearted, to proclaim liberty or freedom to the captives, that is, to those under Satan's control, and recovery of sight to the blind. Jesus was sent to set at liberty, set free, those who are oppressed by the devil, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. It is still today, when we accept Jesus into our heart, he continues to perform everything that he did when he was on earth the first time. Nothing has changed for us as long as we have faith in him. Jesus started his ministry first by being baptized by John the Baptist, for it was fitting to fulfill all righteousness. From that time on Jesus began to teach and preach the good news of the kingdom throughout Galilee, saying to everyone, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand repent, and believe the gospel. We too must be willing to repent, that is, to become a new person and turn away from the sins we practice. The Lord is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any of us should perish but that all should come to repentance. Jesus taught great multitudes on how they could enter the kingdom of God, and his sermons covered everything from teaching them the Beatitudes to teaching them the true way into the kingdom. He taught that there are only two ways of life, the narrow way through him or the broad way through many false religions that leads to destruction. He taught us to enter the narrow gate, through him, because his way, the narrow way leads to life. Not everyone who says to Jesus, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but those who does the will of the Father in heaven. Many will claim to prophesy in his name, 
cast out demons in his name, and do many wonders in his name. Nevertheless, he will declare to them, that he never knew them, and tell them to depart from him, those who practice lawlessness. He chose twelve of the simplest men to become his disciples, and they followed him. Five of the twelve men Jesus chose were fishermen, and the Lord called them to become fishers of men. Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom by telling them many parables, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. His fame went throughout all Syria, and great multitudes followed him from Galilee, Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and beyond the Jordan. And everywhere they went the people brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, and those who were demon-possessed, epileptics, the blind, the lame, and the paralytics, and he healed them all. The most common sickness that Jesus encountered among the people, were persons with unclean spirits, and persons that were demon-possessed. Every generation, from the generation of Noah to the generation of Jesus' first coming, and up to this generation, the problem with unclean spirits, and demons continue to oppress, make sick, and enter humans to control them. However, when Jesus came, he upset the spirit world, and humans were then and now able through Jesus to resist them. There was no help for humans before the first coming of Jesus because no one before him had any authority to excommunicate demons or resist them. Therefore, people had great problems with oppression, possession, and being tormented and controlled by demons, and the problem was widespread, everywhere. However, during the time of Jesus, when they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, he cast out the spirits with a word, and healed all who were sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Those who brought the people to Jesus with these problems, he healed them all. Jesus has also left us with his authority to resist the devil and cast out demons in his name. There were many other miracles the Lord Jesus did. He raised the dead. He made the deaf to hear, the dumb to talk, the lame to walk and the blind to see. He feed a multitude at one time about five thousand men, besides women, and children with five loaves and two fish. The people ate and were all filled, and they took up twelve baskets full of the fragments that remained. Then at another time Jesus fed four thousand men, besides women, and children with only seven loaves and a few little fish. All the people ate and were filled, and they took up seven large baskets full of the fragments that were left. He also has control over nature. He walked on the water of the sea. He rebuked the winds of a great tempest that arose on the sea, and there was a great calm. Even the winds and the sea obeyed him. Jesus of Nazareth was not only a prophet, but also the living Son of God, fully human and fully God, and God showed this to us by the miracles he worked through him. There are also many other things that Jesus did, which if they were written one by one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Jesus' Death and Burial The chief priest, Sadducees, Pharisees, scribes, and elders of the people, plotted against Jesus to put him to death. They complained that Jesus and his disciples did many things which were not lawful on the Sabbath day. After hearing how Jesus cleansed the temple by driving out those who bought and sold in the temple, they all sought how they might destroy him. The chief priest and the others feared Jesus because Jesus drew a multitude of people to him through his miracles and teachings. These acts and other acts of Jesus caused the religious leaders to have growing hostility toward him. Although the chief priest and all the council saw testimony against Jesus to put him to death, they found none. Jesus knew that he was soon to die. He told his disciples the revelation of his death, that he had to go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders, chief priests, scribes, and be killed, and on the third day he will be raised. He let them know that as the Father knows him, even so he know the Father, and he lay down his life for the sheep, his people, including other sheep which are not of their fold, them also he must bring, and they will hear his voice and there will be one flock and one shepherd. He continued by telling them that his father loves him, because he is laying down his life that he may take it again. 
he said that no one takes his life from him, but he lay it down of himself. He has power to lay it down, and he has power to take it again. And this command he had received from his father. All the religious leaders assembled at the palace of the high priest, Caiaphas, and sought how they might take Jesus by trickery and put him to death, but not during the feast for they feared lest there would be an uproar among the people. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come that he should depart from this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Then, after the supper ended, the devil, having already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, to betray him. Satan entered Judas Iscariot and Judas betrayed Jesus. Judas conferred with the chief priests and captains, how he might betray Jesus to them. They were glad and agreed to give Judas money, thirty pieces of silver. He then promised and sought opportunity to betray Jesus to them in the absence of the people. The hour came and Jesus was betrayed into the hands of sinners. Judah came with a great multitude of troops and officers with swords and clubs from the religious leaders of the people. They came to the garden over the brook Kidron with lanterns, torches, and weapons where Jesus and his disciples were. Judas gave them a sign to whom he kissed, he would be the one for them to seize. Immediately he went up to Jesus, said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? They came, laid hands on Jesus, and took him. The detachment of troops, the captain, and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. They led him away to Annas first, the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest of Jerusalem that year. Then Annas sent Jesus to Caiaphas. Caiaphas advised the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people, and not that the whole nation should perish. He being the high priest did not say this on his own authority. He prophesied that Jesus would die for not only that nation, but also that he would gather together in one the children of God who were scattered abroad. It was from that day on, they plotted to put Jesus to death. Jesus' first trial was with Pontius Pilate, then Herod, and Pilate again. Pilate found no fault in Jesus concerning the things of which they accuse him. No, neither did Herod. Therefore, Pilate wished to release Jesus. However, the Jews had a custom that Pilate should release one prisoner to them at the Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas, who had been thrown into prison and was chained with his fellow rebels after committing murder in a rebellion made in the city. Pilate asked the Jews to whom did they want him to release to them, Barabbas, or Jesus, for he knew that they had handed Jesus over because of envy. The chief priest and elders persuaded the multitudes that they should ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The multitude chose Barabbas and demanded that Jesus be crucified. Therefore, Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they requested. He released to them Barabbas, who for rebellion and murder had been thrown into prison, and when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. The soldiers led Jesus into the hall, which was the praetorium and the whole garrison gathered around him. They stripped him and put a purple robe on him. They twisted a crown of thorns, and put it on his head, and a reed in his right hand. They bowed the knee before him and mocked him, and after that they spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head, and then they mocked him more. They took Jesus to the place Golgotha, which is translated, place of a skull, and to a place called Calvary. It was on the third hour when they crucified Jesus and they crucified two criminals, robbers, along with him to be put to death, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Jesus was numbered with the transgressors. However, Jesus forgave them. Jesus said, Father forgive them, for they know not what they do. In the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? After this Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished, he cried out, It is finished. He cried out again with a loud voice and said, Father into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he bowed his head and breathed his last. It was the preparation day, 
and the bodies could not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Therefore, the soldiers broke the legs of the first and of the other who was crucified with Jesus. However, when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead. Nevertheless, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water streamed out. The scriptures were fulfilled again, not one of his bones shall be broken. And again, another scripture says, they shall look on him whom they pierced. A rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, a council member, a good and just man, who became a disciple of Jesus, came at evening to Pilate. He came and asked for the body of Jesus that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him permission. Nicodemus also brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds. Then they took the body of Jesus and bound it in strips of linen with the spices, as the custom of the Jews is to bury. There was a garden, and, in the garden, there was a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. Therefore, there they laid Jesus. On the next day, which followed the day of preparation, chief priests and Pharisees went to Pilate to ask that the tomb be secure until the third day. They feared that the disciples were going to come by night and steal Jesus' body and take it away and say to the people that Jesus has risen from the dead. Pilate told them to put their guards there at the tomb to make it as secure as they could. Therefore, they went and made the tomb secure, sealing the stone and setting a guard. Jesus' Resurrection On Sunday, the first day of the week, after the Sabbath, very early as the day began to dawn, Mary Magdalene, the other Mary, the mother of James, Salome, and certain other women came to the tomb bringing spices which they had prepared to anoint the Lord Jesus' grave. However, there was no one there who would roll away the very large stone from the door of the tomb for them, but when they looked, they saw that the stone had already been rolled away. There had been a great earthquake, and an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, rolled back the stone from the door, and sat on it. The guards who were guarding the tomb had seen this, and they shook with fear and became like dead men. The women entered the tomb, but they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. A young man dressed in shining garments, cloths as white as snow, his countenance like lightning, was sitting on the right side, and the women were frightened. Nevertheless, they bowed their faces to the earth, and the man told them to not be afraid, and asked them why did they seek the living among the dead. He, Jesus, is not here but he is risen. And the man, the angel, brought to remembrance the time Jesus spoke to them in Galilee, telling them that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and the third day rise again. Then they remembered Jesus' words. The man showed the women the place where the Lord had lain and told them to go quickly to tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and indeed, he was going before them into Galilee, they would see him there. Mary Magdalene out of whom Jesus had cast seven demons was the first to whom Jesus appeared to. She stayed at the tomb while the other women were on their way to tell the disciples what they had seen, and when she looked into the tomb, she then saw two angels sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. They spoke to her and asked her why she was weeping. She was weeping because she thought that someone had taken away the Lord Jesus and she wanted to know where they have laid him. Then she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was he. She supposing Jesus to be the gardener. He immediately asked her why she was weeping, and who was she seeking. Then Jesus called her name and immediately she knew he was the Lord. Jesus met the other women on their way to tell the disciples what they had seen. He himself told them to go and tell his brethren to go to Galilee and there they will see him. Cleopas and Simon, two of Jesus' disciples, were traveling that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. They were discussing the things with which had happened, and it was while they talked, Jesus, drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were restrained, so that they did not know him. However, while they talked with Jesus on the road, their heart burned within them while Jesus opened the scriptures to them. They drew near to the village where they were going and indicated to Jesus, still constrained, 
they did not know that he was Jesus, and asked Jesus to stay with them. Jesus went in to stay with them. Jesus sat at the table with his disciples, took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. God the Father raised Jesus from the dead, and the pains of death was loosed. It was not possible to that Jesus should be held by it. God sworn with an oath that he would raise up the Christ to set on David's throne. He, foreseeing this, spoke concerning the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, that his soul was not left in Hades, nor did Jesus' flesh see corruption. God raised Jesus and exalted him to sit at his right hand. Jesus, the Christ, triumphed over death in the resurrection. He was lifted up to heaven and God made him both Lord and Christ. Until the day Jesus was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to his apostles, after his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of forty days, and to the twelve disciples, and after that, he appeared to more than five hundred of the brothers at the same time. Then he appeared to James, then the apostles and last of all, he appeared to Paul. Jesus rose from the dead, and he is the first of those who have fallen asleep, those who have died in Christ. Jesus will raise them up in the resurrection of the saints those who die in Jesus and those who are alive in him at his coming. Death came through the man Adam, the resurrection of the dead comes through the man Jesus. In Adam all die, also in Jesus, all will be made alive, however each in his own turn. Message for the Overcomers You must be born again. All things had been delivered to Jesus by his Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. Nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. Jesus says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It will not be easy to live a true Christian life, because if you desire to come after Jesus, you must deny yourself, and take up his cross and follow him, whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for Jesus' sake will find it. There is no profit to a man or woman if he or she gains the whole world and loses his or her own soul. On the other hand, what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Unless we are born again, we cannot see the kingdom of God. We must be born of water and the spirit to enter God's kingdom. True worshippers worship the Father in spirit and truth, for he is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is called the word of God. In the beginning he was with God. All things were made through him, and without him there was nothing made that was made. Jesus, the word, is God. In Jesus is life, and life was the light of men, and the light shined in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Jesus was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. Jesus was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him, he came to his own people, and his own people the Jews, did not receive him. However, as many as received Jesus, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to who were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Jesus, the light, came into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Moreover, everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. However, he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God. Jesus the Word became flesh, he dwelt among us, and we saw his glory, and he was full of grace and truth. The law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus. No one has seen God at any time but Jesus, the only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him to us. 
the light of the world is Jesus. He is also called the Lamb of God. He takes away the sin of the world. If you follow him, you will not walk in darkness, but you will have the light of life. If you abide in Jesus' words, you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. If you say that you are not in bondage to anything he tells you that whoever commits sin is a slave of sin, and a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if Jesus makes you free, you will be free indeed. Jesus had to go to the cross for us, and he had to be crucified for us, so that whoever believes in him will not perish. God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son Jesus, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Jesus might be saved. The father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to Jesus, his son, that all should honor Jesus just as they honor the father. If you do not honor the son, you do not honor the father who sent him. You must be willing to come to Jesus that you may have life. Jesus is the bread of life. The bread of God is Jesus who came down from heaven and gives life to the world. Everyone who comes to him will never hunger, and those who believe in him will never thirst. All that the Father gives to Jesus will come to him, and the one who comes to him, he will by no means cast out. He came down from heaven, not to do his own will, but the will of the Father who sent him, that of all he has given Jesus, he will lose nothing, but will raise it up at the last day, and this is the will of the Father who sent Jesus, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and Jesus will raise him up at the last day. No one can come to Jesus unless the Father who sent him draws him, and Jesus will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Therefore, everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to Jesus. If you believe in Jesus, you have everlasting life. He is the bread of life. He is the living bread which came down from heaven. If you eat this bread, you will live forever, and the bread that he will give is his flesh, which he will give for the life of the world. Jesus was not talking literally. He was talking spiritually about eating of his flesh, and spiritually about drinking his blood. He was talking about giving his life, his flesh to die on the cross in our place. He gave his life for our sins, and the sins of the world. It is the Spirit who gives life, the flesh profits nothing. The words that Jesus spoke to us are spirit, and they are life. Therefore, no one can come to Jesus unless it has been granted to him by the Father. We must believe and know that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus has the words of eternal life. If you thirst, come to Jesus and drink. You who believe in Jesus, out of your heart will flow rivers of living water, he is the Spirit, whom those believing in Jesus would receive. Jesus is the door. He who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. However, he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus explained the parable. Jesus said that he was the door of the sheep. All who ever came before him were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. He is the door, and if we enter the door of Jesus, we will be saved, and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief, the devil, does not come except to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. Jesus has come that we may have life, and that we may have it more abundantly. Jesus is the, is the good shepherd. Jesus is the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. However, a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. However, Jesus is the good shepherd, 
and he knows his sheep and is known by his own. As the Father knows Jesus, even so Jesus knows the Father, and Jesus lays down his life for the sheep, the Jews, and other sheep, the Gentiles, true believing Christians, which are not of this fold, them he must bring, and they will hear his voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. The Father loves Jesus because he laid down his life that he may take it again. No one took Jesus' life from him, he laid it down of himself. He had power to lay it down, and he had power to take it again, and this command he had received from his Father. Jesus is the true vine. Jesus is the true vine, and the Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in Jesus that do not bear fruit, the Father takes away, and every branch that bears fruit the Father prunes, that it may bear more fruit. We, believing Christians, are already clean because of the word which Jesus has spoken to us. We abide in Jesus, and Jesus in us. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can we bear fruit unless we abide in Jesus. Jesus is the vine, we are the branches. Whoever abides in Jesus, and he in him, bears much fruit, for without Jesus, we can do nothing. Jesus is the Christ, and the works that he did in his Father's name bear witness of him. If we do not believe this, the reason is we are not his sheep. His sheep hear his voice, and he know them, and they follow him, and he give them eternal life, and they will never perish, neither will anyone snatch them out of his hand. His Father, who has given them to him, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of his Father's hand. Jesus and his Father are one. Jesus is the resurrection. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. All who believes in him, though he may die, he will live. Also, whoever lives and believes in Jesus shall never die. We true believers in Jesus, the Christ, believe this. We believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into the world to die for us, and be raised so that we also will be raised from the dead or caught up in the air with Jesus in the resurrection. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me the Lamb of God takes the scroll. John saw in the right hand of the Father who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. This is the same scroll Daniel was told to shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. No one but Jesus was worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals. There was no one on earth or anyone else in heaven worthy to open the scroll or to look at it. Only Jesus, the Lamb of God was worthy to open its seals, for he was slain and have redeemed us to God by his blood. Out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation, he have made us kings and priests to our God, and we will reign on the earth. Amen. Volume 2 The Overcomers Jesus to Revelation by Doris N. Whaley Smith is a must-read for great understanding of the book of Revelation. This is book 2 of the set. Amen. If this video has been a blessing, please subscribe, like, and share.